Oh, hello there. Welcome back. How are you all doing today? So I have a short but exciting video today. I have finally finished that uh, programming project I've been working on for the last, I don't know, three or so months. And I have now got it in a state where I'm happy to release it onto the world so people can try it and, and play with it and screw around with all the settings and wonder why stuff doesn't work. Anyway, this is a procedural mini golf game, to put it bluntly, I've been working on since like the start of December. And it's uh, February now, and I've now finished, and it is now, I believe, uh, what I'm going to be doing is what I've already done, is I've created a Google Docs sheet, where I will be going around and collecting feedback on people, and I'll be using that to write up my dissertation, like the 10,000, might end up being a bit longer, like 15,000 word essay or something. Um, and what this is, is a just a release, executable copy of the game, and what I'm hoping people will do is just give a quick play on each of these methods, I've got five methods here. Inside the folder that you'll download, there's uh, two readme files. One of them is just a text file, the other one's just a quick little 10 minute HTML. They're both the same. And it explains what each of these options do, what each method does. Uh, if you can't read the actual uh, overlay here as you drag over, I've, I've put a lot of work into this. Um, but as you can see, if you're on a 1080p or plus monitor, you can actually see as you hover over each of these options what they do. Other than that, if you're not playing this, if you're playing on this on like 720p, the thing should scale properly, as you could see, like, you know, the HUD scales, but it's a bit harder to actually read the text. You can, you can kind of see it, but not very easily, and there's not much I can do about that, really, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, other than that, also, this is built for Windows 64 bits, so if you have any Windows PC, it's probably going to work. If it's really old, it might not work. Uh, if you're on Linux or Mac, it probably won't work, and I did try to look in to see if I could get it to port over there, but... I, it wasn't easy, and I'm missing this stuff, so it's it's not, like, I've got 20 days or something to write this up, it's, I can't spend the time trying to build the Linux copy, but we might later. Anyway, I'm gonna get on into this, because I'm sure some of you might be interested. Here's the main menu, you've got the option of the five different levels, and as well as different settings for each levels. There's also just default settings, so if I load onto the snake generation, for example, it just loads a map that is 15 long... The height differences is 100% and there's a 33% chance it will raise and lower. So as you can see, if I hit into this corner here, you roll down this hill nicely and such. And those those will happen every 33% of the time a step is generated. So here there's a little ramp that moves downstairs and there's a lot of settings to mess around with. So, you know, if you want, you can make your snake two blocks long and then just knock into it and get a hole in one. All is good. And, you know, if you want, you could screw around with stuff like if you want to play it for way longer. Make it so there's 10 holes. If you want to make it play less, way less, you can do one hole. By default, I've just made it for three, so it's easier for people to just pop in, play a quick round on each of the levels on the default settings, and then give their feedback. But, like, you know, you're more than welcome to. Like, if you want the maze to be enormous, give it a sec, you'll get an enormous maze. I've also made it so the sliders here have values on them, minimum, maximum, average, uh, or default. But if you type it in manually, I've made it so there's a larger average, so... It, I say advanced, it's not really an advanced user thing, but it's just the safe thing. So if you just want to use the safe settings, the slider are fine. But if you want to try and mess around a bit longer, you can type them in, so then you can make, if you give it a little bit longer, because it's generating an enormous maze and then trying to make a map based off of it. That's that's why I've said it's not very safe, because the level's absolutely enormous. <laughs> but, uh, you know, press delete or escape at any time, you can come back to the main menu. Uh, one thing to note, cave generation here is done via cellular automata. If you've done any programming you might have heard of them if you've ever done like Conway's Game of Life it's a similar concept uh, it's pretty cool it makes a pretty cool looking maze and I'm really happy with how it works because uh, it's guaranteed to be playable a big thing about cellular automata is it's not guaranteed to be playable but this is dangerous to mess around with the default settings are probably fine uh, well, they're probably they're guaranteed to be fine but if you start making it so that they'll always spawn as flaws or you make them so they always spawn as uh, walls, I should say, and then make it so it has to be a minimum site. Basically, you can make an Im you can make an impossible map, and the program will just crash instantly rather than freezing forever. It just crashes, which is good. Uh, but yeah, so so be a bit careful when playing around with cave. But everything else should be fine. So if you want to make this nice room here, be quite nice and long, have not very many rocks. You can do that, and it should be safe to just generate as much as you want. But yeah. I'm not going to do much more than that. I want people to play around with. There'll be a couple of little things like that you'll notice. For example, 
Uh, these rocks here, for a while I made it so they just had a cylindrical hitbox, so you just bounced off of them as if it was a wall. And then like a week or two ago I figured it would be more fun to make the rock hitbox like a ramp. And essentially what I've done is so that by doing that, you can use the rocks as a ramp, and I thought it was way more fun, basically. It makes this level a bit more interesting, where, like, you generate the default kind of room, and instead of just having this, like, cylinder to bounce off, you actually have a ramp, and if you angle it properly, you can sometimes, like, skip over the whole map. It's pretty cool. And I thought that would be fun, like... And also, instead of making the walls extend up as far as you want infinitely, I've made it so they're just as tall as they see. So if you can get on top of the, uh, on the wall, you can, like, ride around the level. It's quite cool. Um, and there's design levels. These aren't randomly generated. I just sat down with a pen and paper and created these, and over the course of, like, you know, a week or two, I put together this map. And it's, you know, it's a fully playable course. Ten holes. There's a couple more interesting things as you go along. The first four are just trying to teach you how to use corners. This game, it has some interesting physics, I should say. I've tried my best to make them as best as I can, but... It takes a little second or two to get used to, but like once you get used to it, it is possible to get hole in one on the first like four courses or so. And I'll just quickly show you the first four as they are here. And like look at these steam. I learned how to make particles for this, and also I found out that Photoshop has a MIP map generator in it. Uh, if you remember TF2, I think some places call them like a specular map or a bump map. Pretty much the same thing. Uh, essentially, it's just how like the light bounces off of stuff, but Photoshop has that as a plugin. I only just found out. So as the light bounces off of the floor here, it actually looks nicer on the cave level. You can like zoom in on the floor. Look at those! Look, look at those rocks! Look at those vaguely 3D rocks. It's nice. It's cool. Anyway, that's pretty much all I had for today. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you do give us a go. It's completely free to download. Completely free. I wouldn't charge for it to be honest, but um. You can go and have a look. There is a Google Forms sheet where I'm collecting feedback. Just literally people, you know, one to five, did you enjoy the map or not? And then I'll be using that in my report to say, oh yeah, on average people liked um, Snake Generation, but not Cave. Because obviously some of them are slightly better than the other. I think Snake Generation is pretty good uh, for, like, fun. But I think Cave, even though it's incredibly complicated and in how it works, I think in terms of making a mini golf course, it's uh, it's questionable. Like sometimes you can get really cool looking cave systems, and it's kind of interesting to look around. But sometimes you just get a big hole, basically, and you know you can mess around with the run cycles and make it so it's a really rough cave, like this, and it's less smooth. Read the readme and stuff if you want to know more about it, but. As it is completely random, it's a bit of a crapshoot in how it actually what runs. Like, stuff like that little shape's pretty cool. But anyway, yeah. A uh, lot of little thing is that there's a settings menu. So if you have this on an old laptop and you can't quite run it, you can literally just lower the settings, if you like. If you don't like the sensitivity, you can change the sensitivity as much as you like. If you want to make it so the ball has different physics, I've opened two of those options up so you can make it so you hit it harder, or the ball slows down faster with damping. And you can individually change settings, so if you don't like anti-aliasing, or you don't like the post-processing, or shadows, you can mess around with all that. And there's also a little controls menu here, as well as in the README. And that's it, pretty much. Just remember that you can press escape to come back to the menu if you're afraid, and you do something weird and scary. And that'll be it. Thank you all very much, and I will see you next time. See ya.